All right, welcome everybody. I'm going to actually be showing you how you guys can definitely replace that smart junction box on a 2005 and 2006 Ford Mustangs V6 or V8. It does not matter. So before we do jump into it, how to tell whether or not you need to replace that. So first of all, if you have a water leakage, which a lot of these Gener uh, this generation Mustangs actually have right here on the passenger side it'll get really wet from the drainage it's a really common issue on these generation Mustangs so this is the way I was able to diagnose whether or not I need to replace this this is actually the second time I'm going to replace that part but I'm going to show you guys how you guys can tell whether or not yours is bad but disclaimer I'm not guaranteeing that replacing that will fix your problem but these are some common issues that I've personally experienced and was able to tell that is what I need to replace so first of all this was two years ago where everything stayed on my stereo stayed on my lights will stay on power windows you will be able to open and close whether or not the key was in the ignition or not the car could be off you could be outside doing your shopping that would stay on everything interior will stay on the lights would stay on everything that is one way of telling whether that is bad or not the other one which is now the complete opposite of what I had two years ago unfortunately the battery did die I had the car for two weeks just not moving so the battery died I have a jump box right there another way of telling whether or not it is bad well unfortunately my battery is dead okay so I need a new battery um anyways pretend the car's on right let's pretend the car's on all your lights are going to be on everything I mean the traction the oil your check engine light sometimes even when the car is on it will show that your fuel is empty your fuel light will be on everything will be on on the dash but let's say the car is on in my case unfortunately it's not you won't be able to shift this you can't stereo will not turn on the lights will not turn on the power windows won't be able to roll down either one unfortunately but I can't really show you since my car is completely dead I have not moved the car over two weeks because I've been waiting for the part to arrive yeah it's uh, completely dead okay moving on uh, while it gets some charge I'm gonna show you guys how you guys can replace that step by step and it's actually pretty simple and yeah let's jump straight into it okay so this is the old one here's the brand new one still in the bag right there you guys can see it you will need a 10 millimeter socket because there is one bolt holding it in at the very bottom right there you can actually see it right there it's not on right now because I did took it off for a brief second and I'm gonna show you guys how to uninstall it. Here's the new one, right? Um, it does have these hooks right here. So on the car itself, like up here, this is, there'll be two hooks where it hooks on here. I'm actually looking at the wrong spot. Right here, I'm sorry about that. These little hooks will hook on up here. There's going to be obviously the trim covering this. In your vehicle, you will see this little tab you just want to go ahead and pull that off throw it in the ground just kidding and then you are gonna have to remove this whole panel that's covering that so it basically goes under here you just want to lift this up enough to be able to slide this out and just yank it out but don't be too aggressive because there's a tab right here that goes inside so it would be that one right there you want to be careful because you don't want to break it and once you get that off, you should be able to have super easy access to this. And then from there on out, it's simple stuff. Just 
unbolt that one 10 millimeter uh, nut. And then right here, there's like a little tab on these. All of them have them. You press on this little tab and you pull this gray tab and it will just pop it up. Easily wiggle it out. It's gonna be the same exact thing for like all the other ones. So you can go ahead, there's two in the front and there is about six in the back. So we got those two out the way. And then, like I said, taking this out is pretty easy. You just go up and then you should be able to slide it out like so. You might have difficulties at first. I know I did for sure. But anyways, there's going to be these four tabs. It's gray, black, black, gray. Two different sizes, same thing. Put your little tab in the middle. Pull this outward or towards you and pull out. You want to do that on every single one. And don't worry, there's no way for you to mix this up. They're different sizes, so. Or you could also take a photo, that way you won't forget where it goes. Then there's this one right there. That one is to push right up here and then just yank it out. And then the very last one, same thing. Push the little tab and the gray tab towards you. And there we go. So you took that out. And then fun fact, to tell whether or not this is actually damaged, you can actually see some corrosion. It's not too bad, but it was these right here are super sensitive. Actually, just even the littlest bit of water getting in here will kill this whole entire thing. You see, it's a lot of corrosion right there. I've tried cleaning it, but it did no good. So I had to buy a new one. And that is where this one comes in, see? It's all clean right here, all the connections. I actually bought this used from eBay for about 130 US money. I, I really don't want to buy a brand new one. This goes for easily four five hundred dollars brand new. Okay, so installation, very simple. Everything you use in, do it in reverse. So you want to go ahead, make sure the back plating with the six uh, connections are in the back. Go ahead and plug those bad boys in. So when you're installing it, you just press this in and then the tab you push it outward. That way you can be able to lock it in place. Ta-da! And then connect all the other ones back in place. So unfortunately one of them, the little clip broke off but it still holds. So installing it back in here, like actually to be able to hold on, there is a screw, or not a screw, but a, this right here, this is where the little hole where the nut goes to. So you want to kind of try and get it in there, but you want to get this first top part in. So what you want to do is get it inward here first. And at the very top, you can see right there, that's where they go. That's where they hook on. This little hook up here goes in there and in there. So you want to go ahead and grab, do that part first before actually making it into the, or bolting it back on. So give me one second while I get this because it's kind of hard to do it. Okay, so it's not as hard as it looks once you actually do see it. But now, we can go ahead and push it and just don't tighten it yet, but just put the bolt in there so it won't go anywhere. Go ahead and finish connecting these. So you want to go ahead and connect this one to that one right there. Let me get my light. So connect the blue one to this one, big one to this bad boy. 
We're gonna go ahead and connect it and then try to see if that fixes my problem. One, you are going to hear a sound when you disconnect this and connect the brand new one. Right now, I have my jump box charging so you won't hear it at all. But, Okay, let me go grab my jump box real quick. Let's try it out, see if it did anything. If it did not, unfortunately, I wasted money on that. But let's hope for the best. I know I did not leave my jump box charging for too long, but I want to see if my stereo at least turns on. And if it does, like, I'm not gonna lie, I can already see it's working because this were new. They do not turn on whatsoever with the old one. Now, my stereo is working again. I can roll down the windows. Okay, see that's a good sign. That's definitely a good sign. Okay, and oh yeah, the door's slightly open, so it's not closing all the way. Um, okay, so that's a good sign, guys. Let me try to see if I can turn on my car at least. I really hope so, but I don't think it has enough juice. No, I, I really need a heavy duty jump box right now. But, it fixed my issue. I'm able to use my stereo again. My windows are working. These are working. Obviously, I can't turn it off because both doors are open. That fixed my problem. It should definitely fix yours if you're having similar issues. Again, the issues or the way to tell if you need a new one is radio not turning on. These are not turning on. You cannot roll down your window. You cannot shift. Obviously in the manual, you obviously, but if it's an automatic like mine, you cannot shift it. All your lights will be on. Actually, let me, hold on. Okay, well, obviously they're gonna be on because I have the ignition turned on, not the car itself. But I'm obviously, I, I will update you guys. Let me go ahead and charge my jump box for about two hours, get it fully charged, and hopefully my car turns on again. But yes, quick recap. I just told you how to tell. The other one would be how I said earlier in the video. If this is always on, no matter if the car is on or off, whether you have the key in here or not, your windows roll down, up and down automatically without the key being on. This will stay on all the time. It'll drain your battery, so on and so forth. If you have any of those symptoms, including the headlights, like I was not able, I was not able to turn on my headlights or even my braking lights. They were not working, nothing was working. That is usually what causes it if you have a water leak. But make sure on these vehicles, 05 through 09 Mustangs, you have to clean the drains on the passenger side from the outside, like where all the water drains. You want to go ahead and clean that. That is what causes all the water to flow, mostly on the passenger side. And since it's on the passenger side, that box right there is what controls all your interior lighting everything electrical on the interior that is what controls it a very sensitive part just four or five water drops going in there will kill it don't ask me why or how because i've experienced it like i said this is my second time changing that sadly so i already wasted more money than i should have um but yes it fixed my problem. Everything's working again. I should be able to shift this in about a second or so. I will try to turn it back on. But um, other than that, I hope you guys the best of luck. Hopefully that fixes your problem. It did with mine. And yeah. Brother, let's call it in the crossfire. <laughs> let's call it in the